Thank you. Um, good evening. Welcome to this regular meeting of uh, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. It is Monday, April 11th. Could we have the roll call by the town clerk, please? Chairman Swift Kayata. Here. Councilor Bassett. Present. Councilor Frick. Here. Councilor Lynch. Here. Councilor McKenney. Here. Councilor Moles. Here. Councilor Roberts. Present. And the town manager? Yes, yes. And town clerk. Okay, thank you. Time to pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, invisible, with liberty and justice. I have a couple of um, proclamations here. We also have Representative Goldman, our representative to the legislature here, who has um, some words she would like to share. And I'll, we'll, I'll meet her at the podium. Now then. Good evening. Is there someone here from the boys' ice hockey team? We have some sh per perhaps some shy members up back, but no one who wants to step forward. But um, no, no one here. Okay. Well, we'll we'll read this proclamation anyway. Um, I have here a Cape Elizabeth Town Council proclamation, um, and it is as follows. Whereas the Cape Elizabeth Boys Ice Hockey Team earned the 2005 Maine Class B State Championship, and whereas the championship game was a hard-fought match against an excellent team from a community with a great hockey spirit, and the game culminated in not only a state championship, but also in an 18th straight victory for the Cape Elizabeth Hockey Team, and whereas the victory resulted in the second state title for ice hockey for Cape Elizabeth in three years in a sport that has become increasingly competitive statewide. And whereas this team's 20 and two season is the culmination of dozens of practices over many years with devoted attention to skating techniques, offensive tactics and defensive maneuvers with the practices at odd hours and with need for many sacrifices. Now therefore be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Boys Ice Hockey Team on the state championship and we salute them, their coaches, their parents, and all others whose efforts helped lead to this victory. And it is signed by all the council members dated this 11th day of April 2005 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine. So why don't we give them a salute. Well, some of them are perhaps watching on TV or maybe on the replay later this week. I have a second uh, Cape Elizabeth Town Council proclamation here. Is there someone from the girls Nordic skiing team? Okay, well we've got some actual live bodies here for this one. <laughs> If anybody wants to take a picture, feel free. Um, <laughs> whereas the Cape Elizabeth girls swept the Nordic events at the 2005 Class B Skiing State Championship, and whereas this win marks the first ever state championship for the Cape Elizabeth girls Nordic team, and whereas the girls, winners of the Western Maine Conference Nordic Skiing Championship, captured the top four positions in the classic race, an accomplishment that no other team has achieved thus far, and whereas the talent and dedication of all team members has contributed to their success, these young women have helped to heighten the awareness that Nordic 
is a competitive school sport and exciting to spectators. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Girls Nordic Ski Team on the state championship, and we salute them, their coaches, their parents, and all others whose efforts helped lead to this victory. Dated this 11th day of, our, of April, 2005 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine, and it's signed by all the councils. And if there's a captain or captains here, I'd be happy to present them. Thank you. Thank you. I'll turn this over to Representative Goldman. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Now, uh, just because you get one thing doesn't mean you can't get two, right? Because there's also a um, tradition at State House, and I'm a member of the House of Representatives. And most of you probably have visited there, maybe in the fourth grade or at some other point. Um, and you have a daily calendar, and in that calendar are published the names of people who've done something outstanding. And one of the things that was published last Thursday was your outstanding accomplishment, winning the, uh, the state Nordic uh, ski race. And I, as I'm talking, I'm trying to open this up. This is what the... Uh, this is what the certificate looks like. And as you won, all of your names are there. And I have copies for you, which I'm just going to pass out to you. You can get your own copy. This one will go to the coach. And I'm so happy that the town um, assessments have all those nice words on it because the standard state one doesn't have room for it. But those are all good segments, and they are certainly um, echoed here. This is the state that says state name be it known to all that we, the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives, join in recognizing the following members of the Cape Elizabeth High School Girls Nordic Ski Team, the State Nordic Ski Championship, and all of your names and your coaches are listed. So, once again, let's have a round of applause. Before you go to the town girls, I would like to give you somebody from the hockey team. Nobody made it at the last minute. There, I will, however, find, you know, deliver these to the school and to make sure that they get them. But it also is a, uh, what's in the calendar and is a statement of pride and our state class B champion hockey team. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Representative Goldman. And if there are any members from the team here, if you, if you, you can stay for the meeting if you want to stay for the meeting, but if you want to leave, feel free. Um, reports and correspondence. Do I hear any reports or correspondence from any counselors? No? Um, town manager's report. No. <laughs> no town manager's report. Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. This is one of two opportunities during every council meeting. Um, where citizens have an opportunity to come to the podium. If you would like to do so to speak on any item that's not on the agenda, please come forward. I thought this citizen was going to speak for a minute. Um, I, seeing that we have none, we will move on. We have a long evening tonight. We have several public hearings, so I'd like to sort of keep moving on this. Do, we have before us next the minutes of meetings number 13, 
14 and 15 held on March 14th, 16th, and 30th, respectively. Do I hear a motion? I would move adoption of the minutes for the meetings of March 14th, 16th, and 30th. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion or correction? Seeing none, all in favor of adopting it? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Next is item number 1370405, which has to do with the sewer rehabilitation report and road improvements. Um, we are going to have a public hearing before we actually deal with that item. This is an opportunity for the public to come and uh, let us know what you think on this topic. There have been a number of public meetings. Is there anything that the manager would like to do to introduce this before the public hearing starts? I, I thank you, Madam Chairman. Very briefly, uh, there's been a, quite a bit of publicity on the sewer rehabilitation plan uh, on our website and various different newspapers. It is a, a $5.4 million plan proposed to be done through bonding. It repairs a, a number of uh, very necessary repairs uh, in not only our sewers, but also in a number of uh, roadways. Uh, running Tide Road, for instance, really doesn't need as much sewer work, but it needs road reconstruction. Uh, it, it, the work would begin, uh, the design would begin uh, if the council voted affirmatively uh, within the next week or two, the design. Most of the construction would occur during the year 2006. Uh, the funding in includes all of the work. It also includes uh, necessary amounts for the bonding, for the design, as well as uh, a generous contingencies so that as issues are discovered along the way, uh, we can be responsive to citizens through the process. Uh, it would be 65% paid for through sewer user fees because 65% of the work has been identified as sewer related. 35% of the cost would be paid for through the general fund and that relates uh, to, to the various road work. Uh, because other debt is being retired in both the general fund and in the sewer fund, uh, the work is being scheduled and the debt payments are being scheduled so that they would not result in any needed increase in property taxes or in sewer rates. This new debt would replace old debt that is retiring. Uh, so it, it doesn't pay a lot of work for the specific design details. Uh, again, we've sent out quite a bit of it, but also uh, Steve Harding, our town engineer, is here, along with other members of his staff at uh, Host Associates, including Harvey in that uh, speech, <coughs> and Bob Malley, our uh, director of public works, who deals day to day with sewer problems. Is is also here to answer any technical questions. Okay, thank you. Um, as I said, it is time for the public hearing on this item. Uh, if there's anyone who would, from the uh, audience who would like to come forward and speak on this item, uh, could you please come to the podium and speak into the microphone so everyone can hear you, including mm -hmm. people at home. And please state your name and your address. And please try to keep your remarks as brief as possible. So is there anyone who would like to come forward? Oh, I declare this hearing open. I guess I should have said that. No one wants to come forward on sewer. Okay. Well, then I declare this public hearing closed. Um, and now we are at item 137.04.05. Uh, Councillors, you have the recommendation from staff before you, and we have had a workshop on this. Is there any, do I hear a motion? I, I make a motion that we adopt item 1370405, sewer rehabilitation report and roads improvement. Just give a sec. I, I second it, but just be a little more specific for the record and for the public. Sure. Um, I think we should say that um, we are recommending adoption of the $5.4 million proposal as outlined in the plan and that we are also recommending that the town manager be authorized to work with bond council and to bring a bond resolution to the town council meeting of May 9th and um, further that we authorize the work to begin as soon as possible on the repairs um, in the Route 77 Tall Pine Road pump station. Does that cover? Will you accept that as a friendly uh, amendment? Absolutely. Okay. That's exactly that's okay. So it's been moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. Is there discussion, Councilor? Yes. Just a point of clarification from uh, the manager said that 
Um, I guess maybe I'll stop, drop back a little bit. Henry Berry, who many of you know, was on the council for a long time, and Henry had sent an e uh, a letter up. Didn't feel it was really fair to uh, have the people who are on septic tanks uh, subsidizing people who are on sewers, whereas the uh, when you're on the septic tank, you've got your annual cleaning costs, and you've got the a $20,000 bill facing you when you have to replace the thing. And the manager said that the sewer rate is not going up because of the debt that we're retiring would be replaced by this new bond. If that's the case, then all of the taxpayers are in fact being asked to pick up the cost of the sewer work because otherwise the share that was sewer, the tax rate would be going down. And the sewer rate would have to go up in order to have that pick up a larger share of that. Am I correct in what I'm saying? Would you like to address that? Yeah, if uh, currently in, in two th fiscal year 2006, the sewer fund uh, debt service is $251,702 a year. Uh, the, the plan is, is we, we have debt retiring each and every year. Uh, it goes up to 332000 next year, the debt service payment. But then it drops to 310, 202, 257, 256, even with th these new payments. So, you know, the sewer rates are going to have to be supporting the 65% of the cost of this project that's being paid for out of the sewer fund with sewer rates. So the sewer, the sewer rates will not go down. The sewer rates will have to pay the debt service of 65% of the cost of this project. So why wouldn't the, uh, uh, obviously I'm not a mathematician here, but <laughs> it seems to me that we're, we're retiring X number of dollars of debt that was all taxpayer funded, and we are putting in a new one basically equal to that, but a lot of that is a sewer work. In effect, the taxpayers are subsidizing the new sewer work. I, I Okay, if I could just, I believe that it's sewer debt that's being retired, sewer fund debt that's being retired. So the sewer users are, are the ones who are paying for the sewer, the 65% that's the sewer work. All right. And the general fund debt, which is what taxes, general property taxes cover, um, that's only paying for road work and everybody Okay. Well, if I, I'm probably a little thick on that, but I guess if I no, was, I, I suspect there are other people watching as well that probably were too. No, I, I think that helps clarify things. Thank you. I, Neither will change. The rates will not change, either tax rates or sewer rates, because debt is being retired in both categories, and the division was arrived at by our engineers, the 65-35 share, based on the actual work to be done. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Carol, um, I guess I'd just like to comment a little bit more on that because I, I am sympathetic to, I think we got another communication from somebody else concerned about um, the cost of maintaining your own septic system versus the sewer. Um, and I'm sympathetic to um, that concern, but what I think makes me supportive of this is because the 35% that goes to the tax rate is, and in the general budget, is for roads, and many of, many of which are in, you know, serious need of work anyway that we've been holding off on because we knew that a lot of the sewer work needed to be done. And so I'm, I'm supportive of this uh, rehabilitation plan for our sewer system because I think we really have some serious problems with um, very old sewer lines and we've had some really um, difficult situations over the past couple of years that were not pleasant for uh, several homeowners and um, it really is I think a ticking time bomb um, if we don't begin working on this to quote a recent headline. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Fritz. Are there other comments? More discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, 
Our next item has to do with a proposed amendment to the sign ordinance having to do with athletic field signage. That's item number 138. Uh, the council discussed this um, briefly at the last meeting and uh, last month's meeting and set a public hearing for tonight for this month's meeting. Um, so we will have a public hearing on this um, matter. And is there anything the manager would like to say about it to start it off, just to set the context? Just very briefly, back in 1997, the town council authorized the placement of vinyl and plastic siding, uh, pla vinyl and plastic signs, where did I get siding? <laughs> uh, on the sidelines and in the, in the, the rear fences of Lions Field. Uh, that has been in place since 1998. It's been a, as a fundraiser for the Little League. Little League approached the town a couple months ago asking if they could also do it at Playstead Park. Uh, they can give the reasons for that, but you know, obviously it's revenue driven. The proposed uh, amendment to the ordinance before the council would not only allow it at Lions Field, but also Playstead Park and also other athletic fields other than uh, Fort Williams Park. Fort Williams Park is specifically included, but the draft would continue to allow the plastic and vinyl signage. Uh, at these other locations. Okay, thank you. Um, I would uh, use the same guidelines for this public hearing as for the last one. If anyone would like to come forward and speak on this matter, please come to the podium with the microphone so that we can all hear you and everybody can hear you at home. Please state your name and your address. And if there is anyone here, I believe that, I don't, I don't know him, but I believe there is a Mr. Thibodeau perhaps Thank you, sir. Um, from the Little League, I'd just ask him to speak first, just to set the context, since the Little League was the one who uh, came, came to us with this proposal in the first place. And so I declare this public hearing open. Yes, sir. Thank you, Councilors. Uh, John Thibodeau, 21 South Spray Lane. Thank you. Um, and as you pointed out, uh, I am the newly elected chair of the Cape Elizabeth Little League. I guess this is my uh, introduction to town politics. So, <laughs> um, I uh, have been on the Cape Elizabeth uh, Little League board for uh, oh, three or four years. Um, this is my first year as president and like a lot of volunteer uh, organizations, uh, you tend to lose some institutional memory um, when you go from one set of transition, from one uh, president to another, and uh, I don't didn't really have the benefit even of the when the, the banners were uh, erected at uh, or petitioned the, the town to be erected at uh, Lions Field, and was not aware um, of what the uh, um, what some of the views may be of having uh, banners at, at Playstead Park. Uh, I want to assure the council uh, as well as uh, uh, residents uh, in the Playstead area and those watching on TV that uh, it was an innocent enough request from uh, the board's perspective and that we were simply as, as uh, you pointed out, Chairwoman, the uh, attempted to uh, identify some additional sources of revenue uh, for our league. Uh, we are all volunteer. We are, of course, a not-for-profit. Um, we get the majority of our revenues uh, from fee registration, but we've also been increasing those fees um, over the last few years to, to account for increases in our own insurance as many towns and uh, uh, private enterprises have experienced as well as equipment costs and things of that nature. Um, I did uh, write a letter uh, uh, to the council uh, uh, last week uh, asking for their support on this. And as I reread that letter uh, it, um, and, and uh, and did get some feedback that some of the residents were concerned about what the signage was going to look like and what impact that may have in the neighborhoods. It, it dawned on me that I did this perhaps a little, or we the board did this a little backwards, uh, and that perhaps um, um, we should have reached out to the residents first um, to get their input uh, uh, and uh, on what uh, on on these banners and. Um, Again, uh, the intent here was to do nothing more than to put some banners uh, at place that during the season, taken down after the season. Um, but 
uh, we always want to be, and I think have been, um, uh, an organization that um, you know, we, we want to be a, a, a good uh, organization to the, to the town and then be considered an asset to the town and all its residents. So um, as much as I think the way the ordinance has been written of late to include all the athletic fields as well as simply play fit park, uh, and I, I think that, that raises this to perhaps uh, a little something beyond Playstead. Um, I would certainly be willing, uh, and I would ask that the uh, town council perhaps consider uh, tabling um, this motion on the ordinance so that perhaps um, some of the residents in the Little League uh, could get together, talk about this, and perhaps also bring in some of the, uh, the boosters uh, as well, since this does affect um, some of the other athletic fields as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Thibodeau. Um, anyone else like to speak? Please come forward. No, oh, okay. Then I declare this public hearing closed um, on the athletic field plan. So we are at item number 1380405. Uh, I would just remind counselors that if uh, there's a motion made to table that we won't really have much discussion. So if you want to discuss it first, please just keep that in mind. Um, so do I hear a motion or is there, are yes. there any comments that anybody would like to make? Yes. Councilor Mould. Um, item 1380405 regarding athletic field signage. I would like to make a motion that we table this item until next month. Uh, and hopefully go to workshop in between to discuss it at workshop uh, prior to bringing it back to the public. Well, since Councilor Mould made a motion to table it, now we can have no discussion. So is there a second for that motion? If it's seconded, we can have no discussion. I'll second it. Okay. So all in favor of tabling it? Until when? And sending oh, no. it to a workshop, you said? I'd like to send it to a workshop and table it to at least next month because the so main party that brought it forward has asked us to table it. Okay. I'm not sure that we are going to be able to get, just as a clarification point of information here, I'm not sure we will be able to schedule a workshop in the next month So because of the all the finance committee stuff. Do we need to specify when it comes off the table? Right now, should I just specify next month or two months? Uh, hang on, I need a rule in here. <laughs> well, um, the manager has informed me that there is a public hearing on the budget on the 25th of oh, April. April. So there might be some free time that evening if the council wants to have a discussion. Yeah. So you'll be amending it. So you want to table it until that night? To workshop it that night? To that workshop it that night and then deal with it at the next council meeting after that? I, the thing if I might, I think Councilor Moe's original motion was to table it to the next regular meeting, yeah. which would be May oh, 9th, okay. and to discuss it at a workshop. And I was just trying to be helpful in terms of if you did want to discuss it as a workshop that you could possibly do that on April 25th following the public hearing and vote on uh, the public hearing on the budget today. There's actually no vote on the budget that evening. That was my intent, to, to table it until May 9th in hopes that we can discuss it at a workshop in between. And if we have time on the 25th, that would be a good opportunity evening to discuss it. Okay. So it's basically to table it to the next council meeting in May. Um, that was my second and that was the second. Okay, thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Mm -hmm. All in favor. Uh, can I clarify what we're voting on? Yes. Yeah. Whether an affirmative vote includes a vote in favor of sending it to a workshop or whether it's simply a motion to table for a month. My, my intention is to send it to workshop. Is that in conflict to send it to workshop and table? You can make any motion that you want, but your motion includes two parts, which is to table it until the May council meeting and to have a workshop on it in, in between. 
So I think in the answer to your question, it would be both parts. So an affirmative vote would be yes to both parts. Yes to a workshop and yes to tabling it to May. Right. My intention is to send it to a workshop and table it to the May meeting, at which time if we have to, we can table it again or not take it off the table. But, you know. Okay. So is everybody clear on what the motion is? Okay. All in favor of the motion. Two. All opposed. Five. The motion failed. Uh, the motion to table it failed. Um, do I hear any other comments, discussion, or any different motions? Councillor Bassett. Um, I move that this matter be tabled uh, till the next regular, regularly scheduled council meeting without a, an intervening workshop. Second. That's what I was hoping to do before. But <laughs> okay. I moved and seconded. Everybody clear on the motion? It's just to table it. There's no workshop. It's just to table it until May. Everybody clear? All in favor? <laughs> Two. All opposed? Five. Okay. Well, I guess we're not going to table. <laughs> Councillor Lynch. I um, spent a lot of time, as I'm sure all of you did this weekend, reading the many emails. And, and I have to say, to my way of thinking, uh, the emails from the neighborhood were very persuasive um, to not allow signs at Placid Park, which is why I don't want to table it. Um, I don't think that um, my position would change. It, it might, but I doubt it. Um, I think the neighbors were very persuasive in saying, um, for first of all, and, and we don't, I mean, it's the outside of Fort Williams. It's the most visited spot in our town. It's perhaps among the most visited areas in the state. Uh, it's Little League. It's not Major League Baseball. It's not a business. It's, a, it's an activity. Um, for kids that can happen without signs marring that environment. Um, so I'm not in favor of tabling it because I'm in favor of um, just voting on the merits tonight and I would vote against it. Um, I was actual and I originally thought that we should amend this to delete Place at Park and leave in the school athletic fields but I haven't heard from anyone um, on the school athletic fields, including the school board, um, and to the extent that they were going to be able to have a little bit of revenue, I would be interested in the, that particular issue of signs for the school fields. And I'm all in favor of signs at Lions Field, but I think Playstead Park is different. And um, I guess for that reason, I would move to strike Playstead Park from this um, amendment that's before us tonight. Second. <clears throat> if I could just make sure I understand the motion. So by striking Placed Park, do you want to leave in the school athletic field? I think so, although I, again, I was surprised that I haven't just wanted to heard clarify. from anyone in the public, but I don't view that as something that would mar the environment of the high school ball field and it is up to the school board and I, I think it does leave to them whether or not they'd like to do it and whether or not they could use the revenue. So I guess that's where I come down. It's just to strike Placed Park. So okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood. So it's been moved and seconded to um, strike Placed Park from this language. Is there discussion? First of all, I'd, I'd like to um, commend Mr. Thibodeau for coming in and, and stating his case. When this was first presented, it seemed like a very reasonable concept, but the overwhelming emails and uh, correspondence from the neighborhood indicated that there was really a lot of opposition to this. I think if we keep in mind the fact that the Little League is simply trying to raise money, for a, a very good cause to keep fees low for the children participating 
and that the neighborhood is simply trying to keep a nice environment, if they get together and can find a third alternative, in other words, to keep the environment in a, in a way that the neighborhood can enjoy it and also raise money for the, for the Little League, I think that would be wonderful. So I, I want to commend you for moving in that direction. And I think that um, Senator, excuse me, uh, Council Lynch's um, motion makes sense, and I would support that. Thank you, Councilor McKenna. Councilor Fitch. Yeah, I don't, I don't have, I, I support um, Councilor Lynch's motion the way, the way it is, and it was the way I was going to um, come and present as well. Um, I have no problem with um, signs at Lions Field. I go into Lions Field practically every day, and um, I, I think it is a way that's visible to parents of Little League players to see who's supporting um, the team and, and to raise money. Um, but I did notice that, say, it's just one field that's in Lions Field that does have banners. There are no banners on the second field, so that's another one, a place that you could bring in some revenue. Um, but that, that field is not visible from the, for the general public. And I generally don't favor advertising signs on any of the fields that would be in neighborhoods, that would be seen from public ways, that would be in, the par in like Fort Williams Park or in open space like Gulfcrest. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, and it's just that there is an additional opportunity to raise money at Lions Field on that other field, and this will present an opportunity for other sporting teams to raise money at the athletic field at the school. Council. Thank you, Councilor Fritz. Any else? Council back. When this was presented to us, it seemed like a very innocuous request. And I was fully in support of it. <clears throat> I was amazed when we saw the number of emails that came through over the last 48 hours. My sense is that a lot of these emails overstated the case in the objection. Um, far too many of them referred to billboards at Playstead Park. These are not billboards. This is, what, a four and a half foot fence with signs that will be hung on the four and a half foot fence for, I don't know, four months out of the year perhaps. Um, I didn't see anything objectionable about it. But what we seem to have learned from our recent Fenway Road experience is that when we unwittingly sort of foist something or leave neighbors feel that we have foisted something upon them um, against what they perceive as in the best interest of their own neighborhood, it never ends well. And that's exactly what's happened to us here, is that we're left with a whole neighborhood feeling that something is being brought before them without proper notice, without, a proper, without proper opportunity for input. I commend uh, John Thibodeau for coming in with uh, the presentation that he's made today. He did not come in to say, this is something that Cape Little League needs, this is something that we want, we urge the council to adopt it. To the contrary, uh, he came in making it very clear uh, that the Little League was sensitive to the needs of the neighbors, uh, to the desire to want to work with the neighborhood, um, to want to be not only a good community citizen as a nonprofit organization, but also to be a good neighbor to those who live around the park. Uh, so I thank uh, John uh, for coming in the way he has. Um, but in light of, in light of what we re we've received from the neighbors, and again, in light of the experience we had with, uh, with Fenway Road, I think it would be a mistake for us to approve this over the objection of all the people who live around the park. But I would still encourage um, Cape Little League uh, to meet with the neighbors to see if there is a way that when they realize that these are not billboards, um, that there will be a way to perhaps come back in, uh, readdress this, 
um, and find a common way to meet the needs of both groups. Um, in the meantime, I mean, we know that what this does not mean is that Playstead Park is going to shut down, the Cape Little League is going to come to an end. Um, it just means that one potential source of revenue from one park uh, will not be realized. Um, I suppose the worst case scenario is that participation fees for everybody in Cape Little League goes up a couple bucks, um, or a few bucks, or, or five bucks, whatever the number may be, um, if necessary. So I, that being said, I apologize for the long -windedness. Um I support Councilor, Councilor Lynch's uh, motion. Um, and it's a motion that I would not have accepted um, last Thursday or Friday. Thank you very much. Any further comments? Yes, Councilor Roberts. Thank you. John, I'll give you one vote of support. I grew up in Bangor, and all, the little field, all of our Little League fields are right in the middle of neighborhoods. And every single field had the small advertising across the, the outfield fence. Even down by Fort Williams, people are looking inland, and it says that Cape Elizabeth has a proud tradition of Little League, and we support our kids. And these are the businesses that do it. So I'll go down six to one again, but I, and I hope you can get your meeting. Any further comments? Councilor Moll. I've got a <clears throat> comment and a question. Uh, let me get the question out of the way first. Just to clarify exactly what we're going to vote on in a minute. Are we voting on an ordinance or are we voting on a motion to modify the ordinance before we vote on the actual ordinance? I believe that Councilor Lynch's motion was to use this language but just deleting placed part. That, that, was my, that was my intent. So we're voting on an ordinance. It is a proposed ordinance. It is not quite as is printed here. <coughs> it's just crossing out the place that Park references. Okay. And I, I didn't mean to speak for Councillor Lynch. Was that, was that your intent? That is my intent. Okay. All right. For, first comment. Um, like the other councillors, at first it seemed like a very innocuous request, considering we had signage at the other field. Uh, after receiving uh, several letters from the neighborhood. I realized that the neighborhood was not in favor of this. Uh, probably the single letter that immediately made up my mind that this was not something to move forward was that that I received from Mr. McElhaney, uh, who's the immediate neighbor to the park and puts up with an awful lot of noise and, and other commotion from the park and does it in a very nice manner. Uh, has always been good to the town, good to the neighborhood, and uh, in, in deference to his suggestion, I would not be in favor of these uh, signs at the park at this time. That being said, we've gotten some good input on the Playstead Field issue, and I think, I think we know where that's headed now. Now let's address the athletic field issue. I don't think we've received nearly enough input on the athletic field issue to properly vote to approve signs at the athletic fields tonight. You mean the school athletic fields? Right, the school athletic fields. Uh, my suggestion would be to separate our voting such that we vote to remove Playstead Park from the ordinance and then deal directly with the school athletic field issue, which I would not be in favor of. I would rather see that again postponed to a later date until we can get some input from the public as well as the school department. I'm not saying I'm really for or really against that issue, but we just have not received enough information from the public or the school because they were so focused on the Playstead Park issue that I would, and there's, there's no immediate rush to rush into approving an ordinance allowing signs at uh, the athletic fields tonight. Um, so that, what I would like to do then I suppose is uh, propose an amendment to the motion that we vote on whether to approve that removal of Playstead Park first from the language in the ordinance and then vote on the issue of whether we move forward with the school athletic fields or not. Clear as mud? Well, I think as a practical matter that's what we're doing because the only change is to the schools and I, for one, am anticipating 
a difficult um, couple of weeks going over the school budget. There's not enough money. And so to the extent that we can give the schools an ability to generate a little revenue um, without degrading the environment, um, and it's up to them whether they put the signs on the, these fences around the ball field. Um, so I would not accept that as a friendly amendment. And, and I frankly don't think it's necessary because I think that's all that's left of this anyway. Is there anyone who wants to second the, not, I don't mean unfriendly, but the, the, the Councilor Moles' amendment? Well, it, it appears that the amendment then is unnecessary, unnecessary if we've already decided that Playstead Park is stricken from the discussion and we're just going to simply vote on the school athletic field issue. So I would, I would encourage several other councilors before we come to vote on this to give us, now let's focus on the school athletic field issue and give us some, some thoughts on this, because we haven't workshopped this. So are you withdrawing your I'll, I'll amendment? I'll withdraw my amendment because it's, it's really un, not necessary. Are you withdrawing your second? I think you seconded my motion. I did second your motion. Sorry. I'm keeping that motion seconded okay. then. I don't need to. Okay. Change. So. I was, so I, when I seconded that motion, I thought we were going to have to have two votes, but since we don't have to have two votes, we'll just leave it as is. If I could just comment, I believe that the language as it is um, stated here on this second page says that uh, the signs at the athletic, the regulations governing income generated and appropriate signage at the school athletic field within the overall signage limits are at the discretion of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. So the school board will, I'm sure, be soliciting input before they decide if they want to put signs up on their own property, so I, I'm sure they will, there will be plenty of input for them. Yeah. I would not make that assumption. Well, I guess we have different assumptions. <laughs> I think if someone comes to them with, with a proposal to put signs on their fences, I, I think they'll think about it quite carefully because they're a responsible board. So um, <clears throat> I, I guess I have, I have faith in the school board and their good judgment. Um, so Council Moles. I have faith in the school board too, and I strongly support the school board and the schools. I just think we have not had a time as a council to properly work the wording in this ordinance as far as uh, how that signage pricing is to be set, what should be done with that money, et cetera, et cetera. I think we should discuss this further. Well, um, you withdrew your motion and Councillor Lynch's motion is now on the ta on yes. the table before us and yes Councillor Lynch and I guess now is a fine time to discuss it yes. if you want to discuss it <laughs> turn it to Councillor mm -hmm. McKenna sure I would like to um, say that I agree with Councillor Lynch on the school athletic field signage and the reason being is that I too think that there's going to be a lot of pressure on this budget there's only a limited number of resources that we're going to apply to apply to the budget. The school has to, the, the um, school committee is going to have to carefully manage how they spend that money. And I think there's going to be pressure to raise additional funds, and I think this is a, a good way to to do that. I know personally in my business, we have, and I know others have supported you know various athletic programs through buying advertising and that sort of thing, and I think it's a, it's a great way to augment what they're trying to do. So that's why I'm supporting it. Okay. I'd like to move the question. Um, the motion before us, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Cabana, is to uh, adopt the language listed under item 138, except that we will strike the um, references to Playstead Park. And, and grammatically and, adjust. and grammatically adjust it, yes. But for meaning, we are only striking place to park. That has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Six opposed? Councilor Roberts. Thank you very much. And I, I too want to thank Mr. Thibodeau. I know it's been a difficult issue and the um, 
little league, uh, little league boards and parents' intentions were only the best, and they just sort of got caught up in this. I was very impressed with the um, thoughtful emails that I received from residents, and I, I encouraged the Little League um, Board of Directors to work with the residents around Placid Park, and perhaps you can come to some accommodation or agreement in, in the future, and if so, I, would be, I personally would be willing to consider um, anything else you guys want to propose as long as you've run it by the, the neighbors beforehand to make sure everybody's on the same page. But thank you very much. It's a volunteer organization. I know how hard you all work. So um, thank you. And thank you to everybody who uh, emailed in and uh, sent letters. So thank you. Um, and I don't know if there are any people here from the neighborhood, but if they want to take off, feel free. Um, Item number 1390405 has to do with Fort Williams and a proposal of the Charitable Foundation. Do I hear a motion? Um, I'd like to make a motion. Councillor Lynch. Um, the proposal would be to convey a significant um, property interest in Fort Williams to the land trust in perpetuity. I think that's a really significant action, and it strikes me that we ought to table this to a workshop. Um, before we um, vote on the merits of something like this. So I would move to table this to a workshop to be scheduled um, by the chairman. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, I'm thank you to the court. I'm just wondering if we can hear anything from people who have come to make a presentation? Well, I, I think we've already it's been tabled and we already moved on the action. I think there will be plenty of opportunity and we will give plenty of public notice for and the And uh, should workshop. come to the workshop and... Yes, and uh, yes, we want all the relevant folks and any members of the public who want to come along to the... Uh, to get involved and participate um, at the workshop. The workshop will be scheduled, we'll publicize it, we'll make sure the Charitable Trust folks know, we'll make sure the Fort Williams Advisory Commission folks know, the Land Trust folks know, and the public knows. So thank you very much. I'm just thinking that this is something I don't think the public knows anything about and might be interested in hearing about. Just a brief overview. Well, I, I think I think we need to move on. I mean, thank you. I I hadn't heard from anyone uh, that they were planning on speaking, so that's why we just moved on. So, thank you. Um, I uh, think we need to move on to item number. What is it? One four zero point zero four zero five, which is the land trust request to use the Gullcrest property. Would the manager like to introduce this? Yeah, we received a letter from the Land Trust asking to use Gullcrest on September 25th for Tethered Balloon Drive the Community Gathering. Uh, we're still running this through a, a little bit of the approval process, but the Land Trust wanted to be sure that the, that the Town Council gave authorization didn't have a problem with it first. And what I, what I mentioned that we're still, we, we, we haven't got the final clearance yet from uh, the school department as far as the athletic field, they're not using it, but we expect to receive that. That isn't really a concern. And secondly, and uh, the land trust is aware of it, is that the approval is only for the use of Gullcrest, and they still, if they use the roads at all, they understand they need to go to the chief of police for permission to use the roads uh, for that aspect of their proposed activity. Okay, thank you. Um, is there a motion? I'd like to move that um, the council authorize the land trust to utilize Goldcrest property on September 25th for tethered balloon rides and a community gathering in celebration of their 20th year of land preservation and good business. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Council Mould. I'm a little... I have no problem with the use of Gullcrest Field. I'm a little uncomfortable with the rest of the information that was in the packet about holding a triathlon on a Sunday morning, which zigzags all through Cape Elizabeth. And 
with the uh, Madam Chairman's indulgence, I was wondering if the representative of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust might be able to step forward and tell us a little bit more about it. Would, I see Chris Franklin is here. Would you like to please come forward to the podium so that you can uh, be on the microphone and everybody can hear you? And I would encourage any counselors that have questions, if you want to just do a brief synopsis of what the plan is, Chris, sure. and then if anybody has questions, just direct them to sure. uh, Mr. Thank Franklin. you, uh, Chris Franklin, 130 Oakhurst Road. Also, uh, so appearing as executive director of the Cable of this Land Trust, um, we are planning a day-long celebration uh, on September 25th. That is the scheduled date. We went back and forth on, on choosing that date. That Sunday morning was really chosen, uh, one, because of the transfer station and knowing what a ball that, that can be on a Saturday. Um, and also the soccer games on Saturday at Dullcrest pose much more of a likelihood for conflict than, than the possibility of the football game. So that was really the um, the main choice for the Sunday morning and to, you know, to do it early in the day because we're going to do the triathlon which would run basically from 9 until noon and then uh, have an award ceremony over at Dullcrest. Just to give you a, everybody a little sense of what this is, is uh, <clears throat> it's called a sprint triathlon. It's designed in a much smaller format than the, the larger ones. We would use the community pool for a 500 yard swim and then uh, there'd be a 10 mile bike ride and the bike ride is designed so it's all right hand turns except for one. And the significance of that is that you're not crossing the roads against traffic. Um, and the way that it's scheduled that you do the swim and the bike and the run, because the pool is limited in terms of how many people can be in the pool at one time, 12 swimmers go at one time, so they go in heaps of 12. And so only 12 bikers will be leaving on their bike ride at any given time. So there's not going to be this mass of, of bikers going down the road at any, any given time. Um, it's using 77, it's using uh, Sawyer Road. We're trying to stay off roads like Burwink uh, by Perpudic that, you know, where it's rolling and they're blind curves. This is being coordinated through Rob Smith, who does uh, these events up in. Uh, Bowden, he does one, he does, uh, he's taken over the lobster and triathlon, and he's, um, so he, he does this, he professionally competes in these, and he has agreed to be our, our coordinator for this, so he has lots of experience and, and does this professionally, so it is going to be a professionally managed event, and we will get the requisite permits from the, the police, and obviously we need to make sure that everything um, is taken care of in terms of athletic schedules and all, but first and foremost, we wanted to get the council approval of this so that we that we could go ahead and do that and sort of line things up. So, but if there are any specific questions about this at all, I'd be glad to answer those. Have you had a chance to discuss this with the chief of police yet? We've been playing phone tag, so I haven't I've spoken with Bob Malley about the appropriateness of using Dullcrest, and we've met with Sue Weatherby at Community Services, and she's very excited. And you know, considering herself sort of a co-sponsor, that she really behind it. But I obviously it would be completely dependent upon their <laughs> approval. They need to give a permit for us to be able to use the roads and so we would only do that if, if, if authorized. Councilor Lynch. Chris, I think the general concern with a Sunday um, morning schedule is um, road closures um, that would um, prevent people from going to church and so I, I read this and I, I assumed that there would be no road closures required? No road closures. Okay. No. With the only, the only assistance from the police, we, you know, we, we will have volunteers at all the turns to make sure, but any, the one time we cross the road, we would have police presence there, and probably in and out of the high school as well, because that mm -hmm. might have more traffic than anywhere else. Councilor Moore. If the uh, operation of the triathlon requires more police officers than we have on duty to watch certain intersections, does the uh, Cape Elizabeth Land Trust have the funds to, to pay for those extra officers? Yes, we do. We do. And, and you know, any of those permits and, you know, also insurance, we check with our insurance uh, carriers to make sure that, that we're covered for the event at Dullcrest. The organizer of this event, Rob Smith, when he organized the event as a sh sanctioned event, 
and the participants must pay an additional insurance fee, so every participant is covered by an insurance that's carried by a national organization that sponsors triathlon. Other questions? Or Turn your head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting wet lash going back and forth here. I'm like in a tennis match. Uh, yes, Councilor Roberts. But like to cover the expenses of the... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said Councilor oh, Roberts. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Carol. You said it. I thought he was a ventriloquist. I there didn't. For a <laughs> Go ahead. I refer to you. Councilor Fritz, would you like to speak? Councilor Roberts, I'm referred to you. <laughs> um, if Councilor Moles was wondering about paying for police officers and that sort of thing, I, I'm assuming there would be a fee for entering the race. Absolutely. And, and it's not something that comes out of the land trust treasury that they're usually using for buying. No, that's built into the cost of registration. That the fact that knowing that we are going to have to have some police presence. Councilor Roberts. <laughs> Thank you. Chris, it sounds like a, it could be a fun event. And uh, a couple of questions I had. Um, whereabouts on Gullcrest are you proposing to do this? I spoke to Bob Malley about that. Is Bob still here? No. Um, we, it depends partially upon what, if any, fields are being used for athletic events. And what we would do is the parking would first and foremost be reserved for people attending those athletic events. Being a Sunday, we're also able to park out behind the public works building. There's plenty of parking there. So we're looking at that would be our, our parking area. Um, so if there were a soccer game, we'd probably be on the football field. If there were a football game, we'd likely be up on the soccer field. But we try to minimize uh, the overlap as much as possible. My other question, given the most recent item we had on our agenda, have you checked with the neighbors yet? No, we haven't. <laughs> okay, thank you. More questions? Councilor Backer. Uh, not a question, or a, a, a comment. I, when I read this, I thought it was very exciting. I think it's a great sort of end of summer celebration. Um, I think it sounds like a lot of fun, sounds like great uh, potential to bring a lot of people together for a fun day. And I hope it's the first annual of many celebrations like that to come. If I, I'd just like to let everyone know that in anticipation of doing this, we're doing our 8th grade trail work this year at Gullcrest, and we're going to be working on the trail, you know, because the, the run portion of this will be on the trails that go into Gullcrest and over the new bridge, and so it'll kind of show off that the new bridge crossing there, and so we'll be doing some trail work, and we're coordinating with Marine to, to make sure that that area gets cleaned up in, in time for, for this event. It's just, just one quick comment. I just I thought this was a great uh, introduction, if you will. I know it's not an introduction of the town to Bellcrest, but what you're introducing are more activities, including the trail, which is a great way to get people um, behind the idea that you know these trails are for their use and open it up to the town. And the aerial view from the balloon rides, I think, will be eye-opening to a lot of people to really see what the town looks like from above. So. I have a question. Since it is budget season, I have to ask about the, the financing of it, and Councillor Fritz touched on some of this, but the balloon rides will be self-supporting. In other words, the fee will cover whatever you're having to pay the balloon folks, and the race will be, the fees will cover the cost of the race, and I think there was food, and that would be there were it, there's fees for the food, so that would cover that. So we can just, only hope. <laughs> well, yes. Um, so there are no costs to the town that I can think of on this. Are there? None that wouldn't be compensated. You know, Sue has that said wouldn't that be she compensated. Would, yeah. I mean, Sue has said that you would like to waive the rental of the pool. You know, that's okay. something that if the council wants to get involved, that's fine. But um, you know. Would seem to be her discretion to do so. If you just checking, but just checking. Um, and this this is a, a significant um, project for the land trust. So what sort of investment is is everything self-supporting, or is, this is what Councillor Fritz was getting at? Is it, is this going to be drawing down your treasury to some certain extent, or 
with special events, you never know. You have to put the money up front. We're looking for sponsors, and you know, we hope that the community will come out. Okay. Okay, great. Well, it sounds like a very exciting event, and I, do we have a motion in front of us? We've talked so long. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. Um, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Seven. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I presume um, the manager will just let us know what happens you know, with the discussions with the police force on, on the race since they haven't been able to touch base yet. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, that brings us to a number of different items um, having to do with appointments committee recommendations. And there are items number 141, 142, 143, and 144. And I would turn to the chair of appointments, who is Councillor Moles. I don't know if you want to deal with these all together or if you want to do them separately. Make, make the motions however Let me, you want. Uh, what I'll do is I'll make the first item a separate motion and then throw the other three together. Okay. Um, so, item number 141.04.05, uh, when the council got together and voted to approve a comprehensive plan committee, we had originally provided for 11 members. Uh, when the appointments committee met, it found, it found that to get proper balance and to get a full representation of different interests in the community, uh, we thought it would be appropriate to expand from four citizens to five citizens. So this uh, motion is to change the charge of the comprehensive plan to increase the number of members from 11 to 12 so that we can have an extra citizen member. Okay, second. It's been moved and seconded. The comprehensive planning committee, not right. plan. Um, oh, sorry. Comprehensive Plan Committee. Okay, is it Plan Committee or Planning Committee? Planning Committee. Right. Okay. okay, it's written, I've seen it written both ways, but we know which committee we're talking about. So, uh, is there discussion? It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Do you have your hand up? No? No. Okay. Um, hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Moving on. Item number 142.04.05. Uh, having had an opening on the Board of Assessment Review, as Chairman of the Appointment Committee, we have um, notified the public, held interviews, interviewed candidates, and we would like to recommend uh, Christopher Lynch fill the unexpired term until 12.31 of 2006. We'll just handle these individually. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion or question? Just Councilman. that the record should reflect that Christopher Lynch is no relation mm -hmm. of mine, although he's a very nice man and I would be <laughs> happy to have him as a cousin, but just uh, he's, no, he's no relation. I just want to make that clear. Thank you for that. Any I, other? Yeah, I, w I would be remiss in mentioning right from the get go that we have had some of the most difficult deliberations over picking people for these different committees because we've had such good candidates step forward, including Christopher Lynch. Again, no relation. <laughs> okay. Any further comments? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Next one. Item number 143, 04, Again, now that we have increased the allowed citizen representation to the Comprehensive Planning Committee, or Comprehensive Plan Committee, whatever you want to call it, we have uh, five names to put forward to the council. We have Julia Beckett, Robert Dodd, Leland Skip Murray, Mary Beth Richardson, and Frank Strout. Okay, is there a second? Thank you. So moved and seconded. Comments? Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. 
Thank you. Next one. The last item here is item 144.0405. Uh, the Spurwing Church is in need of some repairs. The town has done a engineering study and we're putting together, mm -hmm. as you know, a committee to look at the engineering study and make recommendations on how these repairs are to be made, uh, particularly in a historical light to make sure that uh, we maintain the character of the building and possibly the committee down the road would be asked to help in some sort of fundraising effort to, to uh, secure the funds for this very much needed maintenance of Sparrowink Church. So the appointments committee met and has the following candidates. We have seven candidates for this appointment. Uh, Jane Beckwith, Daniel Chase, Darren McClellan, R. Bruce Munger, Elizabeth Peterson, Ann Strout, and Millicent Betterline. Second. Been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Councilor Backus. Well, yeah, I'd like to use this discussion opportunity, since I think it's the last one on our list, to say that, you know, in looking through all of these, and Council Knowles already commented on what a difficult time the Appointments Committee had. But in looking through the, uh, the online applications that people filled out that we have attached here, I was amazed at the experience, the education, um, the ingenuity, the creativity of Cape citizens. We are so fortunate to have the, the residents that we have in this town. We do have a virtual think tank of experience. Um, to bring to bear and you know all of us being sort of focused in on budget right now since we are spending so much time on that we realize how much our town does with relatively little compared to other towns uh, to which we compare ourselves and I think it's in large part due to the incredible experience and creativity and education of our own citizens so I think we, uh, I just want to thank them all for committing as much time as they do to make this a great place to live. Thank you. You stole my thunder. Uh, it is indeed the group of volunteers in this town that is one of the key assets of the town. I mean, we talk about uh, the physical assets of the town, the financial assets of the town, but the people assets of the town are incredible, and I include the, the municipal and school staffs in that, but the volunteer assets are tremendous. And we have not experienced trouble. Uh, we, our trouble with getting appointments made is that we have too many good candidates as opposed to not enough. And many towns have problems getting enough people to serve on their boards and commissions. And we are lucky indeed, and on behalf of the, the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, I'd like to thank everybody who volunteers and works for this, this town and its citizens. So having set up, Councilor Lynch. And I just wanted to say, um, for those people who applied and were not appointed, um, we would encourage you to apply again as vacancies come up because uh, it was in no way a reflection of um, anything other than we had such a talented, deep pool to draw on, but there were many, many other people that I know we on the Appointments Committee would all love to see some time serving um, the town, so we'd encourage them to apply again. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of this last appointment recommendation? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Item number 1450405, which has to do with undersized lots. Would the manager like to introduce yeah. this? This is an issue that the council d began discussing about a, uh, almost a year or so ago now when you were looking at the various town-owned lots and you suggested that, that perhaps we ought to look at if perhaps some of them could be sold, if perhaps some of them could be used for affordable housing. Uh, the planning board looked at this, gave a recommendation to the council. The council sub subsequently had a workshop and uh, the conclusion at the workshop, or the consensus appeared to be that uh, this might be best looked at by the Comprehensive Planning Committee and that the pending action uh, should be tabled indefinitely. 
uh, which, which means that in essence that the planning board report you know, is, is filed for the record, but you're not taking any action. Okay. And I would like to move that it be tabled indefinitely. Okay. Um, <coughs> and it's just point of information before anybody seconds this. Um, is that table indef indefinitely, period, or have also have the uh, Comprehensive Planning Committee review as part of its work down the line? I, I would think that this would be one of the many issues that the Comprehensive Planning Committee would want to seek public opinion on. Okay. So I just didn't yeah. know if you wanted yeah. to explicitly sort of send it off to that new committee I'm happy as, to send as on their it yeah. work list of things to look at. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved and second. seconded. It's a tabling motion, so there is no discussion. All those in favor? Opposed. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moles was to be opposed. Okay. Next item is item 146 0405, which has to do with the Cumberland County Hazard Mitigation Plan. Manager, please. Yes, thank you, Ann. This uh, plan was prepared at the end of last year by the Cumberland County Emergency Management Agency, uh, George Clarity's outfit, as well as by the Cumberland County Soil and Water Conservation District. And what it does, it, it looks at all the different uh, possible hazards to the environment, uh, particularly as it relates to stormwater in Greater Portland, and uh, in, excuse me, in the whole county. And it, it, if all the different councils adopt, adopt this, it gives the right uh, to apply for FEMA, what used to, I don't know if it's still called FEMA, but FEMA funds uh, to address some of these uh, hazards. Uh, you know, any individual grant application would be uh, subject, you know, like if there was an area that was subject to flooding, we could actually go in and apply for a grant to uh, address the situation, uh, provide uh, every uh, council adopt. Okay. I did Thanks. give you the executive summary, but in the interest of preserving the environment, I didn't give you a copy of the whole report. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we thank you for that on a number of levels. Councilor Fritz? So if we didn't get some grants, do you think there's, there are some things here that this commits us to spending any significant amount of money? I mean, I know we've done, we've gotten some grants. We've done, um, like I think we've gotten a generator for having the school be an emergency shelter and some things like that. Yeah, it, it doesn't commit us to doing anything. To give you, give you an example, uh, Sawyer Road and is mentioned Sawyer Road and Sperling River. Uh, description of an astronomically high tide and heavy rain impacts pipe runs at capac capacity, cause undersized <coughs> culvert, proposed remedy increased culvert size, cost estimate fifty thousand to two hundred thousand. It doesn't commit us to doing that. It simply is one of the many things identified in this plan. Uh, you know, most of the ones incapable of increasing culvert size. So it's a matter of the possibility of applying for that. It does mention the fact there's no generator at high school, but you recently addressed that through a home security. Mm -hmm. Any any project you have to actually authorize. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to make some note that some of the things, there were a lot of things in here that actually I think we have done in terms of protecting wetlands, requiring stormwater uh, management proposals from subdivision uh, approval and, and different things like that. that. So a lot of things we've already done to having strong ordinances. Um, I was noticing one recommendation in here that um, Councilor Roberts has mentioned in the past, and that's putting utilities underground um, will help with some storm, mitigating some storm problems. And so maybe that is something we ought to be looking at in our ordinances for new subdivisions. Um, and maybe our planner might take note of that. So. Based on Carol's comment, I'd move for uh, adoption of the Cumberland County <laughs> Hazard Mitigation Plan. She's often right on that one. <laughs> is there a second? Second. 
It's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? Although, I'm sorry, I, I guess we had most of the discussion before the motion. Is there further discussion or questions? Jack. I was fortunate to be sitting in on a meeting this afternoon in South Portland. They had the same thing in front of them. And if you go through it, you'll notice that an awful lot of things have probably already have been done by the town, the different departments. Um, it, and it is a good idea to have a, a countywide plan that everybody's working on the same page and trying to go in the same direction. So I think it should be a, a, a good process for us to be part of it. Thank you. Further comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion? Seven, it's unanimous. Thank you. Our next item is item number 147-0405, which has to do with a re uh, policy having to do with returned checks. Our assistant manager, Deborah Lane, would you like to come forward um, and introduce this item? Good evening. I'm not sure how far into detail you want me to go. I believe Councilor Backer wants more time to look at this and maybe table this until next month um, to talk to me just before the meeting, so I'm not sure how you would like me to proceed with an introduction or wait till next month. Uh, let me just look at my fellow counselors to see if, do you, would you like to hear an introduction, fellow counselors? And we won't take, I hope you won't take it personally if people <laughs> say no. Well, I think Councillor Backer's um, consideration is a good one, I, but if we hear, hear this, maybe that'll help clarify some issues for all of us. So a brief introduction then, just okay. so very that good. we know what um, we're talking about here. Okay, so we know what we do. This is our return it. check policy that has to do with return checks, whether it be mostly for insufficient funds uh, and, and other um, reasons. This policy um, certainly continues the attempt of uh, providing guidelines which um, provides our best ability to collect these return checks, uh, a policy that hopefully um, deters submission, submission of bad checks. We haven't been totally successful. Uh, in our endeavors in that regard, and to collect the checks in a reasonable manner. So what I have done is I've gone over the current policy that we have and made some suggestions, and basically there are three components to it. It's to ensure that we collect not only the uh, original check that was returned, plus the $25 return check fee. It is also to ultimately guarantee funds for those uh, multiple offenders, I guess as I call them, those that continue to um, provide the, the town with, uh, with bad checks. And also in the cases where we believe that we need the assistance is actually through a collection agency. Uh, this would mirror the policy that the school board has adopted in the last few months. Uh, if you'll recall, they have had some um, uh, issues with their school lunch program and the receivables that they had at the end of last year. Uh, so since all of these return checks actually come through my office, whether they're school, town, community services, uh, we felt working with the school, the municipal, and community services checks kind of mirroring that policy. So again, what this policy is, is it puts in writing practically what we're doing, in a practical sense, what we're doing now. Uh, and so again, it's just really moving towards hopefully um, reducing some of the, uh, the bad checks that we have right now. And, and as I say, I guess the, the, really the biggest thing is to um, eliminate eventually those that have already been on our on our bounce checklist two or three times already. We just keep going through the cycle and through it, and I would just like to try to, you know, put a halt to that. So, um, that's are there any questions uh, for Deborah? I guess I have only one. I, I see that you have um, outlined steps for the third bad check and the fourth bad check. And um, a question I have is: Did you give any thought to? You know, second time you're out instead of four times. Absolutely. <laughs> the, the town is, has been very um, generous in the time frame it's given folks um, to come forward. I was just trying to, you know, strike a balance. I, you know, if, you, if you'd like to see it come back next month with a, a third strike or second, we can certainly, you know, revise that. Um, 
again, just trying to be as kind as possible, you know, in the situations. And, you know, I just say up to this point, we've been extremely generous. Any other comments or questions from counselors? I'm just wondering what Counselor Zachary's concerns are and whether you need more information or... Um. Oh, I really don't need more information. I was just offering um, my assistance to the assistant town manager just to help with the rewrite to clean it up a little bit. That's all. So just to work on the language, not the, the basic... It, it, right. I uh, guess I would agree. I mean, in my reading it, it seems to be, you know, it could be more clear. Okay. Is there anyone who, uh, I don't know if there is consensus, just in the interest of providing direction back to Ms. Lane, is there anyone else other than Councillor Lynch who is interested in uh, having fewer instances than four? I wasn't interested so much as I wanted to find out whether they were. I. I don't feel strongly. If, oh, if they, okay. I misunderstood. If they, I mean, I'm, You're my sorry. thought is that she's working with people, and there may be people who have valid reasons, uh, or maybe there are people who don't. So I just really wanted to explore it with them. Okay. How much they thought about it. But I, I read more into your question than you intended. You know, it, it's a tough issue. Okay. Are there other comments or questions before we? Hear a motion? Okay, is there a motion? Is there a motion? I, I move that the uh, consideration of the proposed amendment to the return check policy be tabled until the next regularly scheduled meeting of the town council. Until the, the, the May meeting. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. The tabling motion, so there's no... <laughs> Sorry that you're raising your hand for a question. Um, all in favor? Seven. It's Thank unanimous. You. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lane. Uh, okay. Item number 1480405 which has to do with the land acquisition disposition process. This is something that uh, I asked to have on the agenda. I, um, in response to some very good questions uh, asked by Councillor Roberts, um, I want to ask the council to authorize me to create an ad hoc working group, small group, to develop a draft policy which would be brought back to the council um, relating to the acquisition and disposition of municipal, pro municipal property. There have been some questions about the process looking, looking forward to, as we've been looking at town-owned property over the past two years, uh, a number of questions about process have come to the fore, and um, I'd just like to put together a small group. I don't want to do some big full-blown committee that would have to go through appointments. Poor appointments committee has had enough people to have to interview lately just a small group, put together a draft, and um, bring it back to the council. So, so I guess since I'm the one who brought it up, I would move um, that you authorize that, what I just said. I second the motion. I moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Hearing, I'm sorry, couldn't tell if you had your hand up. Council Moles. Okay. Um, all in favor? Six. Um, opposed? One. That. The uh, next item is item number 1490405, which has to do with the sale of a portion of the lot behind Rover Road. The town manager, please. Yeah, we've been having discussions for a couple of months on this issue, and there was a there was a, a butter who was interested in purchasing the property, made an offer. The offer was insufficient. Uh, the there's been no offer given since. It's been sufficient, and I, I think it's it's time to move on to other things. And I would encourage the council to table this indefinitely. In other words, to kill it, and uh, you know it would not return to the council. 
Okay. It's been moved. Is there a second? The, I don't know if the town manager can. Oh, okay. He didn't no, move it. She, she didn't Council, back it. No, okay. Councillor okay. Fritz. I'm sorry. I, was, yep. I said yes, you, but I was turned away. So it's been moved. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, discussion? There is no discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you'd think I would have learned after all these tabling <laughs> motions tonight. My head is reeling. Um, all in favor? Opposed? Councillor Mould. Okay. Um, that brings us to item number 150.0405, uh, sale of a portion of South Street lots. Um, I'm not sure if there are people here. We, our intent, well, do you? I do want to say two quick things. The, the heading says sale of a portion of South Street lots. The motion as drafted is to recommend that you, in accordance with the statute uh, as cited, and to executive section discuss the disposition, disposition of publicly owned property. I'll try to set it up. It, it's just a little update on this Mitchell Road lot to authorize you, and I may wish to speak that briefly to you as well. So I just want to, even though the heading says just uh, the, the uh, South Street lot, I just want to make sure that there's the understanding of the brief we have a discussion of that. And the motion as drafted allows that, but the heading uh, doesn't indicate that. Okay. One other thing while I have before. Yeah. The, I also note that in preparing the agenda, I forgot in, to obey the council rules and neglected to put the closing citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. Ah. Uh, and I, I apologize for that. And usually when you have an executive session at the end, you give that opportunity prior to the executive session. So why don't we hold on this one for a minute. It, and we will now have the second opportunity for c citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. If there's anyone who would like to speak on a different item, would you please come forward? No one's coming forward. So now we can, we're done with that one. We can go back to item 150. Um, Just because we're going into pu executive session and the public won't be allowed in that executive session, I didn't know if there was anybody here. I know there have been some calls and questions and emails, a few, um, from people about what's happening with that uh, particular lot, the South Street lot, and people may have seen it on the agenda. I didn't know if there was anybody here who wanted to come forward to say anything about it while we are still in public session so that we can hear it. Like Mr. Hill is here, and we have had some updated offers uh, that uh, he'll be sharing with the council in the Mr. Hill, the town attorney, for those who are not in the know. Okay, there's no one who would like to speak. Okay, Council Mould. Well, actually, I had a couple of residents call me on this issue tonight, and I said, no, there's no public hearing tonight, so you don't need to come down to the meeting. So. I guess I gave them bad advice. I didn't realize we were going to allow anyone to speak on this, so they would have came down to speak in opposition to it. Well, it's not a, a you are correct, no. it's not a formal public hearing, but I just thought because yep. people couldn't come into the executive yep. session, I didn't want to stifle anybody who would have waited through the whole meeting to say something. And uh, in, in brief, for those that are listening at home, there have been several complaints from neighbors that are concerned about the possibility of increased traffic through the Kildare and Columbus neighborhood. Uh, but that's not why I had raised my hand originally. I just wanted to get it uh, on the record. We've had a number of items tonight that were put forward to table indefinitely, and I just wanted to put on the record that I, I think that's a bad practice to make a motion that has absolutely no discussion if we, if we as counselors decide to table something, that's fine. But I think it's a bad practice to put an item on the agenda to table indefinitely without having spent a few more minutes than we did giving the public some background on, on some of these subjects and why they're going in the direction they're going. That's, that's all. Okay, thank you. Um, so, is there a motion on this one? Oh, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, is there a motion? To go into executive session. I would move that we go into executive session to discuss um, the disposition of publicly owned property, in particular um, those lots called the South Street lots. And a discussion of Mitchell Road. And a discussion of Mitchell Road. If, if you're going to 
excuse me. Go ahead. If, if you, you need to cite the statute if you're going to read, read it aloud. I'm sorry. Executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA section 405. Thank you. That's legally required for anybody Second. who wants to know. Oh, paragraph subsection 6C, <laughs> I'm told by <laughs> Councillor Backer. <laughs> Said, Additionally, Councillor Backer, Esquire. <laughs> well, and thank um, God he's watching out for us. So. It's a good thing I need him right here. On my um, Madam Chairman, if I may, if we're going we're gonna to be really specific, maybe include. Uh, and this is uh, this is Michael Hill, the town right. attorney. Uh, maybe include also attorney-client consultation in 405-6E. Well, thank you very much. Do you accept I'll accept that as a friendly, friendly amendment. amendment. And is the second? Second. Yeah, okay, great. Um, I should mention uh, that uh, a couple of things while we're still on camera, um, that we are going into executive session. We may or may not return to public session and may or may not take a vote. I don't know at the end of this. Well, you, you we will take return. a vote. We have to I mean, we will come in back into public session. I'm sorry, but we may or may not take a vote. Um, but we will we'll be turning the cameras off. And also, I did want to mention that um, we have a number of meetings coming up for anyone who's watching. The next regular town council meeting is Monday, May 9th. A special town council meeting will be held on April 13th, 2005, for the purpose of setting a public hearing on the proposed budget. The April 13th meeting will follow a finance committee meeting beginning at 7.30 p.m., so we're not sure exactly what time the council meeting will start. On April 25th, the town council will meet in workshop session at uh, 7 p.m. to hear a presentation from the property owner next to the high school access way, the driveway, who wishes an exit driveway onto the high school access road. The school board is also being invited to that workshop. The workshop will be followed at 7.30 p.m. with the town council meeting that is expected to include a public hearing, uh, assuming we vote to set the public hearing at the previous meeting, on the proposed budget. The budget adoption is scheduled for the May 9, 2005 Town Council meeting. I just want to make sure everybody knows when all those meetings are. Councillor Lynch. Kim, can we also be clear for the public because I've heard more comments on um, the workshop that we're having on April 25th, that that is, as I understand it, in respect, in regard to um, a proposal for Dunkin' Donuts. Is that it, it, it's with the uh, representatives of the, the owners of that property uh, to, to build a retail complex that might include in the okay. development proposal. One done. part okay. of that might be a I just done want to be clear, though, mm -hmm. so we talk about the public knowing what's so going on. So everybody knows where we're talking about. We, 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 but we still don't formally know that a Dunkin' Donuts is going to be proposed for the thing. Well, even though we don't formally know it, yeah. we informally know it. it. So I... <laughs> Just want to thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> when you're done. Okay, that's it for the meetings, um, Councillor Small. Since we're about to close, I, I, I did want to mention Family Fun Day is coming up, Saturday, June 18th. Get ready. Get your <laughs> neighborhoods. Get your floats ready. We're going to have a big parade this year with lots of extra attractions, a long Family Fun Day, and hopefully an evening event followed by fireworks. Great. We still have to take that last vote uh, to go into executive session. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.